Oh, I'm not even clipped yet. <laughs> that was a ride. I was scared to death half of the time, and I want to do it again. So a buddy of mine just started a new group ride, but unlike other road bike rides, this one's on gravel. So I guess you could call it a gravel ride. The only problem is I don't have a gravel bike. I just have this road bike. I do have some gravel tires though. So today we're gonna put these gravel tires on my road bike and we're gonna see if I can survive a gravel ride. This is my Rita Esprit. Right now it's got a 28 mil Vittoria Corsa Pros on it. These are the Vittoria Terreno Dry, and if you look right here, they're 33s. And they measure 36.2. Will they fit? Yeah, they will because my uh, sponsor gave me these tires. If they don't fit, that would be really awkward. I'm very lucky because Rita lets me use any bike in their demo fleet. I borrowed their Sater Steel gravel bike for the Bike Sauce event a few months ago, and it was awesome. But today, I want to see how their flagship carbon road bike, the Esprit, does on gravel. This is the SRAM Red build, and it retails for just under $10,000. Now, if I were a better YouTuber, I would have weighed just the wheels before putting everything on, um, but I'm not. So <laughs> let's start with the rear tire. These are the other wheels. Other is Rita's in-house brand. Uh, they are set up tubeless. I don't know if you can hear that sloshing around. Galfer rotors. SRAM Force 1033 cassette. So the rear tire, 1,630 grams. That's pretty dang light. Especially for a gravel setup. Let's see the front, 1,250 grams. And now we're gonna see if my sponsor was right that these tires will fit their bike. Wow. They actually got a decent amount of clearance. What do you think of the looks department? How do you like the bigger tires? Quick little bonus here. If you haven't used it, you should use Soko's tire pressure calculator. Weight distribution, gravel bike, calculate. 39.5 in the rear, 38 in the front. A little low. <laughs> We're ready to go. Morning. Okay, so we're headed over to Heavy Water right now, Tim's Coffee Shop, where we're gonna roll out from the ride. But before that, I wanna thank Vessi for sponsoring this video. Vessi make these storm burst low tops and they are fully waterproof, not water resistant. When I learned this, I was intrigued, but it hasn't rained in a bit and I really wanted to know, will they actually keep my socks dry in the rain? Then, while walking my dog, inspiration struck. I didn't need rain. I could test it myself with water, with water. As you can see, they're doing a good job so far keeping the water out. And thanks to Vessi's patented Dymatex material, they're also breathable. Vessi have a bunch of different shoe styles, but I like these stone burst low tops because they give you the grip and support of a hiking shoe with the comfort of, well, Vessi calls it cloud comfort. And I can see where they're coming from because these shoes are super comfortable. And they kind of have more in common with slippers than shoes because they're super easy to slip on and off. Also, despite being a big boy, this shoe is super light, even with my toothpick arms. Here, I'll show you. These are the arms of a proud road cyclist. I can easily lift this above my head at least once maybe twice. As you can see, I got water all over the outside of the shoes and all over the camera lens, but my sock stayed dry, fully waterproof. Get 15% off your first pair of Vessies by clicking the link in the description or using the handy dandy QR code on the screen to get some comfortable, breathable, waterproof shoes. Obviously right now I'm not on gravel, although these roads are pretty close. Tim has a route that goes to Elysian Park that apparently has a bunch of like single track and stuff. So I'm really excited to check it out. Elysian Park is where Dodger Stadium is. So far, riding on the road, the tires are a little slower than road tires, which you would expect, and I guess almost hope. The goals today are simple. Number one, survive the ride. Number two, don't fall on Hobo Trail. Number three, survive the ride. What's Hobo Trail? I'm glad you asked. 
The ride starts and ends at Tim's coffee shop, Heavy Water, just outside Elysian Park. He hosts a lot of cycling events, including this weekly gravel ride named Something Different, which he founded with Andrew Jackson, who you've probably seen in videos like this one. That's Andrew. And that's Tim. They've been working together with other members of the community to connect all of the dirt sections in Elysian as one big gravel ride. Of course, their definition of gravel might be a little more extreme than most people. Or maybe just me. <laughs> That's called Andy's Gambit. They. Is that Andy? Andrew. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> Andrew was out of town this week. He was over in the Philippines doing all these like awesome rides, but normally he's there. Hobo Trail is the section today that I'm most nervous about. A narrow path that hovers above the five freeway with plenty of opportunity to tumble down to the gridlock below. It's not that bad. <laughs> It'll get your handling up quick though. Let's see how this goes. I feel like I'm way out of my element. My uh, gravel skills are pretty new. <laughs> I think it's all pretty simple stuff. Normally it gets sketchy when you start trying to go fast. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, well then. what it is. Like, it's too slow. I'll just hang back and watch what you guys do and then uh, try to replicate. Watching this channel, you might think my gravel experience level is higher than it is. I did ride up the death road in Bolivia but most of that was on a gravel road large enough for cars to travel on. And I rode up it slowly. I am still very much a beginner gravel cyclist, at least when it comes to my bike handling skills, especially downhill. This is the beginning of the first dirt section. Um, there's gonna be like a up and to the right that is um, a little tricky. Okay. So. The other guys started letting pressure out of their tires, and even though I had already done the Silka tire pressure calculator, I decided I would also let air out of my tires, which ended up being disastrous. That's the whole valve for. So embarrassing. The first of many embarrassments all day. For me. <laughs> oh yeah, clipping in right here is so fun. I have to give credit to Tim, Matt, Chase, the whole crew, because they were very patient with me, and I needed it. <laughs> if you've been following along, you know last week I switched my handlebars out to narrower 38 centimeter handlebars. In road cycling, narrow is more aero, but in gravel cycling, you want it to be wider so you have more control, uh, especially when descending. If you're trying to have a road bike and a gravel bike in one setup, you're gonna have to make compromises on things like handlebar width and tire clearance. And you will probably also have to make some concessions when it comes to gearing. I'm running SRAM Red, which is a road group set. You could end up putting a bigger cassette on it, but then you'll need a different derailleur. Is it optimal? No, not really. But for the amount of gravel riding I do, being able to just switch wheel sets seems to be like a pretty good option. As long as I survive this ride. So this, this is Hobo Trail. Just take your time. It'll be fine. <laughs> Commit. Yeah, okay.
Don't look down. <laughs> I'm not even clipped in. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the baptism by fire. Exactly. <laughs> I just kept repeating. Commit, 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 commit. That is the ticket, though. Yeah. yeah. The hesitation is what gets you. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's run it. Awesome. That's the hardest part. Oh, sweet. I mostly survived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The worst part is, of course, I was wearing my road shoes. I don't know what I was thinking. Gotta clean these guys off. It was a lot of fun. Whew.